10 years, 20 sketchbooks. How much did I actually improve? Let's find out. Hello everyone, my name is Miguel and these sketchbooks are little mementos of my journey, starting when I was 13 all the way to the present. Now a quick note, when we're watching sketchbook tour videos, it's easy to compare ourselves for good or bad, which is natural, but I think it's important to remember we all start drawing at different stages of our life and the meaning and relevance of our art is unique to us. So embrace your own artistic path and cherish the progress you make, no matter how big or small it might be. With that said, let's get to the tour. Oh boy. So like many other artists, we're starting off with anime, which seems about right since my older brother had this how to draw manga book he got when he was still interested in drawing, and I copied a ton from it. Starting to get interested in anatomy, Lumi's body proportions, and some copies to finish it off. That's the end of the first one. Now I have these loose papers that I'm not counting as a sketchbook, but I believe they were made between that early sketchbook and the next. I must have been around 13 or 14 at this time, and I have a core memory related to the sketchbook they belong to, since it was the first time I actually sold a drawing to someone who now I consider one of my closest friends. Johnny, I'm always reminding you of this, but thank you so much. That memory is still a cherished core memory of mine. These might be all over the place in terms of timeline, but bear with me. These were made copying off Pinterest most likely, following those eye tutorials. <laughs> I'm so proud of this. But then drawing from imagination is tough, and always manages to bring my ego back to reality. Thankfully. Some hints of trying to understand perspective, although my brain didn't click with these basic perspective things until much later on. And this sketchbook is from around 2014, 2015. I still haven't reached high school. So everything I'm showing you at this point is from around 7th to 9th grade, using drawing to avoid awkward social encounters, passing time in classes, or when I was bored at home. Oh, this is when I first found Drawbox exercises. That's a big jump. So this is 2015 already. Definitely. Yeah, I bet there's gonna be Drawbox exercises until the end now. They are great though, if you want to improve your draftsmanship. Barg exercises. Oh, we have a date, 27th December 2015. More Loomis things, I'm actually really happy with these. And with that, we finished the second sketchbook. So let's go to the third one, 2014-15. You know what? I'm actually impressed with this one. I never really used markers much, so the fact that I got it to this point at that time, I'm impressed. I have no recollection of how I found the book, but I remember feeling lost in terms of drawing education. So I started copying Bark's plates, since it made me feel like I was improving. Back to some figure drawing, figuring out proportions. And I finished the third one with some lumens. Alright, not a bad way to finish. Next. Still doing a lot of copies and using draw box exercises as warm up for the day. I think this is a copy of Kim Jong Yi, so this should be the year I found his work. Oh, I remember this one well. I just watched Lee on the Professional and saw the piece from Ilya Kupchinov. I was such a fan of his work, and this was an attempt at drawing that painting. Look at this amazing cross hatching. Ooh, amazing. I'm starting to see more perspective things here. So this should be the time when I was going through Scott Robertson's book and learning how to control proportions with perspective and replicating planes onto others. Yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, they were mostly useful for industrial design and things like that, so I quickly dropped it. But you can tell he's a master at his craft and shove a huge amount of knowledge into that book. And we're almost in high school. So let's check out this one and we'll speed run through it since we have a lot more coming. So Kim Jong Yi copies, more Kim Jong Yi copies, figure drawing, animals, faces, elephants, lines. Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bridgman? <laughs> Okay, this is proof I was still in 8th or 9th grade, since there was a girl 
I think I think her name was like Emilia or something. And she wasn't even from my class. But everyone was talking about her drawings and uh, coloring skills. So I was like, nah, nah, I can do something better. <laughs> so this is what I made trying to prove myself. Never finished it, but I like it. The left should be Kim Jong-yi and the right, maybe a statue or something. More bar things. Portraits from reference. Diva from Overwatch. And with that, we finished this one. That was Ninth Grade. I was 15, 16 at the time. I was drawing more and more often, since I knew I wanted to do it for a living. I was helping friends with their own projects in class. So at the end of the year, my drawing teacher just called me aside and told me honestly, Miguel, every artist that is known in Portugal has been through blah blah high school of arts. If you want to follow this path, I recommend you get out of here and go there. And I can't thank her enough for that recommendation. So with that, my friends, we reached the high school era. Now, I am excited about this since I did go to that high school and we were forced to always keep a sketchbook on us to draw on it as much as possible. And by the looks of it, let's say I did around three sketchbooks a year. That's pretty cool. So let's see what they have. Starting off with a drawing from reference and some color, since I did want to make the first page pretty and all, trying to use more color with the desire to draw something pretty. Since more people were watching now, there was competition. Cynic head shapes. <laughs> this was some planning for an oil painting, but I was already painting digitally, so it was a bit of a letdown since I was used to having control over everything. But it's good that I was trying different mediums. So this was 10th grade, and in that school we had an extra class just called Project, where in the first year we try a variety of disciplines, ceramics, metalwork, product design, screen printing, etc. And these were drawing for one of those courses, metalworking, doing a necklace, in the screen print test. <laughs> drawing from classmates. <laughs> Simplifying the human body into tubes and things like that. These don't belong here. They belong to one of the sketchbooks we already saw. But this page is ripped off and I can glue them here and wanted to show off I suppose. <laughs> Starting to get some awareness about perspective. Being able to build up a spider with the two points of perspective inside the box. Actually proud of myself. And that is it. 2017, beginning 11th grade. Practicing those tricky hands and box rotations. And these were made after finding Kranz Kushat and his Gumroad lessons. He's such a good teacher with so much information. Just in those three or four Gumroad videos that for a while I was obsessed. Completely obsessed with perspective and being able to simplify and manipulate everything by putting it inside these boxes. So I was getting a lot more into foreshortening and building objects through boxes. Ink tower, day one, out of one most likely, since I'm awful at sticking to these monthly challenges. Here we are, three hours later. Nothing happened. Oh well. <laughs> so yeah. Still in 2017, trying gouache paints, a little ocean and some rocks. Very sexy. Drawing in class, cafe, train, bus. And these are warm-up shading and perspective exercises. Influenced by Ahmed Alduri. Drawing burbs and ducks. <laughs> Not really drawings, but this is a good memory, since I wanted to upgrade my drawing tablet for a display screen. So I was comparing the prices and the pros and the cons between some models. And with all the money I had barely saved up, I got a Gammon PD something something. Ah, I was so in love with it when I got it. Actually seeing what I was drawing on the tablet itself, it was crazy. Little did I know, Procreate was about to enter my life soon after. More draw box exercises. Painting of a little sunset in oils. Faces from reference. And I really like this one. Focusing more on separating the positives and negatives. Really cool. Oh, we have a date. 16 February 2018. Getting a bit more into character design and illustrations with all these poses. Going in a good path. With that, we finished this one. And this is the end of 11th grade. And this time I had already made up my mind that I was going to concept art. 
Super based off. I've seen these videos of you too. I wanted to make the cool illustrations Fang was doing. Speed painting those amazing scenes like two hours. <laughs> so naive. This is a friend of mine drawing. His drawings are always super dynamic. I love that about them. And he was already super into Ashley Wood. Which showed in his drawings. But he was actually one of the reasons I got super into his work. And these tips about nozzles are from Cynics. Again, his anatomy videos are really good. And drawing overall. I feel like a lot of his beliefs art wise align with mine. So I always love it when he releases new videos. And that finishes this one. Let's go on to the 12th sketchbook. Alright, next sketchbook. Weird alien guy to start it off. Beautiful. Girlfriend at the time going for more of an angular approach. I like it. I feel like at this point I'm getting looser with the gestures and lines. If I were to do some figure drawing right now, it would probably not look that good. And that's it for this one. Quick and easy. Now this one is on craft paper. This brown textured paper. And the thing about this sketchbook is, I remember I barely used it since it was so precious and I wanted to make something pretty that I ended up avoiding it many times. Which is sad, since the contrast looks so good with the white pencil for highlights. But yeah, sadly, that's it for this one. Oh well. And this one should start 11th grade. So we have a lot of stickers over here. This is a sticker I made for product design. And then Vicente, my friend I showed you the drawings of before, had some spare space on a sticker sheet he did. So I printed out this night. This was a block print my girlfriend at the time made, based off Muka. And this must have been some sketches I did as preparation for the sticker. So, first page. Drawing my own hand. These actually look really cool. Being more bony and focusing more on the knuckles. Really cool. Patting myself on the back. <laughs> Draw box exercises with a magic sword. Melee. <laughs> and then she drew me. <laughs> beautiful. So beautiful. Ooh. These were off Pinterest, following Ahmed's 100 head challenge. But as I mentioned before, I'm awful at sticking to these. So these were probably the only ones I did. In Portugal, the year you turn 18, you have to go to the nearest military base and watch their presentations about different branches of the military, what they do, etc. 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 I did this drawing while listening to one of those. But this light grey marker is really good, it's quickly giving it more depth. Gotta use it more often. Figure drawing during class, each one of us posed in the middle of the class and we had to use mediums we rarely use. So I used watercolors. Oh, I remember this was the time I first found Terje Topi's work and wanted to try using that much texture. Although on his work, he has a really good sense for it and of course, a ton of practice, so they look really cool. This one isn't too shabby though. And then, as preparation for my last high school build for project class, I did the lightbox. So these were some measurements I needed so I could fit all the pieces together. And... It's a little bit up now, but here it is. Look at these smooth corners. Can't even tell they were fit together. <laughs> <laughs> Product design classes were really cool though. Since after you build a whole project, you actually got to build it. And it left you with that satisfying feeling, you know, after you finish building something. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> These are tags. Since a friend of mine was teaching me the steps and layering order for graffiti. Clearly, I was very good at it. <laughs> this was him though. Again, teaching me the steps. And that finishes this one. All right. So let's see. I remember this was for a drawing class. Part of like an A2 huge drawing. I only like the head though. So that's what I kept. Two anatomy cheat sheets I did based on Cynix. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. I'm surprised I never used this gold paint again. I used it sparingly since I was just testing it, but in these areas where it's more stacked, it actually looks so good. I'm gonna use it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no idea how much I can show on YouTube, but here's a noodle cup. Mm -hmm. Portraits based on reference. 
And this is one of my brother's motorcycles. I drew it right before I drove it. <laughs> Let's just say the motorcycle is okay. And that is what matters. Yay. Assassin carrots. Some drawings while hanging out with friends in the park at night. Experimenting with textures. It's always fun to see Will Weston's shapes and textures. He's probably a really good teacher. Drawing on the train, going back home after school. Oh my god. <laughs> I was drawing this kid on the subway. After like two minutes, he noticed and got so so spooked. So I had to stop. And follow them home. <laughs> <laughs> drawing with friends. I should keep a ballpoint pen in my pencil case again. It's fun to shape the planes like this and then going out and carving them. Cool. Mel E drawing her weird things. And then I drew her again. Probably for the last time. From here on out, it's 2021. You can't see it yet. It's a secret. <sighs> I'm gonna leave it here so I don't forget. So with five sketchbooks to go, we have the last one from my high school. Starting off with the drawing gang. Classmates of mine. And this was at the museum here in Lisbon, trying to get different shades and textures, depending on how I hold it and how fast I do the strokes. Really like it. And around this time, I actually found Cup of Jasmine's YouTube channel and her discipline, drawing skills, ideas, and versatility through mediums. Yeah, inspiration right there. So of course, she was a huge influence on me becoming a tattoo artist and starting this channel later on. Got some weapon designs, a classmate. And then a city map for a project outside school. Sketch inspired by Phil Hill. Oh, oh, I can censor it, I guess. So as I was finishing high school, I found DeviantArt jobs and started doing illustration commissions. And most of them were adult themed. It got real weird real fast though. Oh, July 2019. We gathered everyone from class and did one last dinner with everyone as high school came to an end. <laughs> the beginnings of Pablito, the potato night. <laughs> and with that, my friends, we finished the high school era. And I was convinced I wanted to do concept art for a living. But at the time, there were only one or two schools teaching it with like really expensive upfront costs. So I went to the UK. The year was 2019. I was a young 19 year old lad on my big journey to the UK for university. <laughs> and we're starting that off with a point of view on the plane. Being able to remember these things is why I love these point of view drawings. Lecture hall. And this is a drawing by a Portuguese friend I met over there. He was in the comics course, so I didn't see him around as often. But it was fun hanging once in a while. Perspective things from class. But as I got to university, I actually started drawing less in these sketchbooks. Since the university offered us an iPad, as I started getting used to Procreate, I almost stopped drawing on these sketchbooks. So there's a lot less drawings. This is a friend of mine filling a page, inspired by Peter Draws. I still watch every single one of his videos. He has such a chill vibe and his voice is great to just listen in the background while I'm drawing. Highly recommend it. Some sketches for my sister's wedding invitation, figuring out the storyboard for the unique project. <laughs> and this has story words since I wanted to try doing a webtoon episode. And then I did it in digital. Never finished though, unfortunately. And drawing at my brother's house to finish this one. Next. And we start right off with a storyboard. Can you see anything on the camera? Let's hope so. Trying to figure out one of the characters for the comic. It should be a sorcerer, so everything is around that theme. Figure drawing. And these are thumbnails for two separate pieces. This was an illustration for uni, and this was a personal piece for a painting. Ah, I miss this. I miss just going with the blue pencil and figuring stuff out. More loose drawings with the blue pencil. This is for another class for uni. We had to design a prop. So my idea was some sort of box that you could take with you. Then you just click on something and it would open up into a full room. And by now this is already the second year. 
some weapon designs. Oh, that's cute. This is how I transferred drawings to canvases at the time. So I drew this on the iPad and then printed out the A3 sheets and did a good old graphite transfer. <laughs> Some character and architecture designs. And, oh, no. The rest is secret. So I made these after uni in the summer before I got my tattoo apprenticeship. I was trying to fill pages with designs like this to fill my tattoo apprenticeship portfolio. And later on, do my very first YouTube video. So we will leave this for later and we can move on to the last sketchbooks of the video. You know, these three are all from 2020 with different purposes though. This one was for school, so we'll go through it real quick. This was one of the classes dedicated to improving our draftsmanship doing a lot of draw a box like exercises while the other classes were more focused on concept design itself. A whole lot of line exercises and a whole lot of figure drawing since they had three two hour life drawing sessions once or twice a week and I went to a lot of them during the first year. <laughs> I remember this page well. During one of the figure drawing sessions I got bored of drawing just a model so I did another point of view of course which is a lot cooler. Let's be honest. <laughs> Going outside with the class and drawing buildings. And the drawing of a street to finish it off. And again, that one was for class. These two were being used on the side to try out some different things like patterns and stuff. And a friend of mine commissioned me to paint the back of a showcase he has, Rick and Morty and Minecraft themed. So these were some tests and the version I used as a guide while painting it. A lot of things I'll change. For a month or two, I was working freelance for an indie video game company, doing the initial concepts and then final illustration stills for the game. I think it never got released, but these were some sketches for a character called the Red King, trying to figure out what he'd wear and use as a weapon. Oh! I totally forgot to mention, but yeah, we're in 2020, so this was around the time I had just started tattooing on myself and friends. So these were some steps regarding tattoo aftercare. That's it. So let's see, let's see. My brother and some planning for a few cards I was doing for a video game. My room with the dirty plates. Having drinks in the kitchen of the house we were living in. Some tattoo planning since I was going over to Leicester for two days and had a few tattoo appointments with friends there. But I stopped in Leeds along the way and had to draw the church because it was so cool. Concepts for uni, December again. I was back in Portugal at a friend's house with a Christmas tree. Some concepts for uni, drawing on the train. And that's it for this quick one. Right, next up, we have a fully functional sketchbook, okay? Easy opening, just how you like it. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the last sketchbook I used seriously in uni, if I'm not mistaken. It was like a pound in the university store. So instead of treating it with care like I did with this moleskin, for example, I treated it like loose paper. And guys, let me tell you, that felt so good. So we're starting off with some bird feed copies for a personal project. I like how clean they turn out. Some harpies. Again, this blue pencil. Magic. Just magic. Drawing in my room. Some more eagles and harpies. Harpy eagles. Drinking and drawing with the roomies. And here we should be starting the last term of uni. Since I'm writing out ideas, trying to push tattoo in there any way I can. <laughs> since at the time I had made up my mind that I wanted to tattoo full time after uni. So I wanted to use the project as a way to develop my tattoo design portfolio. So I could get an apprenticeship right after I got out of uni. Some friends over for dinner. And you know it's my house, when the Christmas tree is still up in February. Oh well. Hey. 
having coffee with a friend. My house again, so we should be reaching summertime. The school year should be over. I was back in Portugal. Some butterfly tattoo ideas I did later on for a friend's arm. And that tends this one. This sketchbook was used during a bit of a time frame and while using the other sketchbooks. So we'll open it and see. Exactly. So I'm still in my room in the UK. So we're going back a few months. So figure drawing and a copy of Kim Jong Hee. Sketching on my break while working at Yaddle, carrying packages and sorting mail. One of the worst jobs I ever had. I stayed there two weeks and then left and started working in Subway, where I stayed for like two or three months and it wasn't bad at all. Here I am with the roomies after dinner, we're all just drawing and doing our own thing. This is based off a photo of Instagram. I think her name is NGC or something. And tattoo designs of a simplified rose for a client's wrist. And here we are on the airport for the last flight back to Portugal. I guess I really was using both sketchbooks at the same time. Having dinner with friends. Drawing a friend while we were on the subway. I remember I wanted to turn this one into a tattoo design with the flowers coming out of the ribcage. Oh, that spoiler! So in between that drawing and the previous one. The summer after I finished university, I started working as a tour guide. And while I was working there, I was working on this flash design. So as soon as I arrived home after work, I did a lot of line exercises after the draw box to get my hand warmed up and worked in all these flashes. And I was obsessed with snakes and dragons. So I was always practicing how to draw the scales and the wrapping body and how the snakes would flip and everything over the plants. And that's the end of summer, right? <laughs> I started this YouTube channel, showcasing that portfolio, and shortly after, I got the apprenticeship. Drawing at the cafe, dinner at my house, one of my siblings, and more drawings at the cafe. And just like that, we jumped to 2023. And now, around this time, I stopped using the sketchbook I left on. I was still painting often on the iPad, but a few months into this year, I started going through a drawing burnout. After months of drawing a ton for the apprenticeship and then only drawing for clients, I was starting to lose the passion for drawing. It had happened before, after working freelance. First it was illustration, then it was concept art, and now tattooing. So all things I thought I'd love doing, but after months of doing them, I started feeling miserable and wondering if I wanted to keep drawing for a living. So I was using the sketchbook mostly to keep my hand moving and having some variety from digital work. Drawing at a friend's house. And with that, we finally reach the last sketchbook. The one I'm using at the moment. Ta-da! Isn't it beautiful? Look at it. So three or four years ago, I was visiting Casa do Faun for the first time. It's a medieval themed bar in Sintra, but next to it, there's this arcane shop with crystals, trinkets, and a ton of other stuff. And on the shelves, they have a few of these Celtic inspired sketchbooks, each one with their own original cover. So I got one for myself, obviously, because it looks like a spell book, and I love it. So at the time, when I got it, like 2019, 20, I drew a page or two and never picked it up again. Until now, because these sheets aren't the best and the binding can't hold much of it. Back to 2023 though. As the year went on, the burnout persisted and the owner of the studio asked me to leave actually, saying, Miguel, I'm sorry, but I need someone whose head is 100% into tattooing. So I'm gonna have to ask you to leave, which I completely understood. I was a mess for months, but then I started reading The Art Spirit by Robert Tenry. And it cleared my head in a lot of topics. And from then on, I simply embraced the situation. And although I've been drawing a lot less, I feel a lot happier with every drawing I do. And do try to follow my intuition in what will make me happy. I also went back to working as a tour guide with a friend of mine. And it was a whole lot of fun, but my body can't take it more than the summer season. So that has finished for now. The beginning of a tattoo design I did for my brother. Sushi date with a beautiful lady. As you probably noticed, I've been loving drawing these houses and, and shops. I like the ones that look like they have some life in them. 
or interlocking weird streets. A weird fish-like creature, just having fun totally. And here I went on vacation with my family and I had a lot of free time. So I dedicated myself to these drawings and tried to record them. The fact that I couldn't simplify the vegetation on this one really bugged me. So for a bit I tried to draw exactly that to see if I'd improve. Drawing at Johnny's house. Drawing at the cafe. This is a thumbnail for a piece I'm still starting. Still gotta figure out the composition first. Bat lady. And this is the very last drawing I did. Just yesterday while listening to Peter draws. Seeing him drawing freely put me in the mood to do it as well. So I just grabbed a pen and started doing random stuff. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> and with that, my friends, we finally finish this sketchbook tour. I'm not even gonna tell you how long I took to record this. <laughs> if you stuck through the whole thing, you're brave. After going through all those periods of my life, I think it's easy as artists to fall into the trap of attaching our self-worth into whatever or how much we're producing, which is one of the reasons I've been trying to develop a healthier relationship with drawing, rekindling the joy of drawing for myself, free from the pressure of perfection and external validation, which is easier said than done, of course. But drawing really is special, it was always there for me, and it is the medium that allowed me to preserve all those memories and emotions throughout the years. I am lucky to have found it so early on in my life. Now, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to anyone who's joined in this voyage through my sketchbooks. I hope this video encourages you to pick up your own sketchbook and create fearlessly, enjoying it and embracing every stroke as an opportunity to grow. With that said, take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.